The Palace Hotel in Crookston, Minnesota, was a landmark for over 100 years. Crookston is located in northwest Minnesota, along the Red Lake River. Early settlements in Minnesota were typically started along rivers. However, Crookston got its start from the railroads. The Northern Pacific completed its track to the Fargo-Moorhead area in June of 1872. This gave the railroad a connection to Fort Garry in Manitoba, Canada, via steamboats on the Red River of the North. The Fargo-Moorhead area had been a southern port on the Red River for the Red River Transportation Company of St. Paul. This company had three steamboats that ran on the Red River, the Selkirk, International, and Dakota. Obviously, one focus of the steamboat line was to carry passengers up and down the river. For some, Fort Garry was the ultimate destination. Fort Garry would later become the city of Winnipeg. However, in 1872, there were less than 1,000 residents. Cargo was the big moneymaker for the steamboat line, and the Hudson's Bay Company shipped thousands of furs through this connection. In addition, alcohol, tea, tobacco, and groceries filled the cargo holds. In August 1872, the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad built northward to the Red Lake River. Its crossing point became the city of Crookston. Crookston settlers now had a direct rail route to the Minneapolis and St. Paul areas. This also gave the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad an advantage over the Northern Pacific. It now had a closer steamboat connection to Fort Garry. The Red River Valley was an ideal area for growing wheat with its flat terrain and rich soil. The Red River Valley was advertised as the richest agricultural district in the United States, where crop failures were never known. Farms were said to be gold mines. The railroads were given huge tracts of land to sell in the Red River Valley to help fund their construction. After selling the land for farms, the railroads brought additional things the new farmers needed, including buggies, wagons, plows, rakes, and mowers. The St. Paul and Pacific's line into Crookston was fairly straight. However, the Red Lake River was anything but straight. The Red Lake River was a looping and winding river that had many oxbows along its route. It was said that a man could board a steamboat and still wave goodbye to his wife a half an hour later due to the winding route of the river. The Red Lake River held numerous catfish. The early settlers joked that they ate catfish stewed, fried, baked, boiled, scalloped, and in bouillon. The St. Paul and Pacific Railroad entered Crookston from the south-southwest. Crookston called itself the Queen City of the Red River Valley. The St. Paul and Pacific Railroad built a large depot on the west side of Crookston, which is shown in this photograph. The new town had dozens of stores and saloons, two hotels, and a number of tents and shanties. Despite its birth from the railroad, it didn't take long before Crookston residents became fed up with the St. Paul and Pacific's monopoly on their town. Therefore, they were extremely excited when the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern Railroad, which would later become absorbed by the Northern Pacific, came to town in November 1889. The Northern Pacific Railroad operated their line on the eastern side of Crookston. This new line also gave Crookston people access to Minneapolis and St. Paul and Winnipeg, Manitoba. By 1891, Crookston had grown to about 5,000 residents and spread around the Horseshoe Bend in the Red Lake River. The Northern Pacific Depot was located on the east side of town. Along the Red Lake River, 
a huge sawmill had been built by Thomas B. Walker. The Valley Roller Mills produced several varieties of flour, including the North Star brand. The Crookston Brewery supplied the local saloons and area with hundreds of barrels of beer. A prominent feature on the north side of town was the Polk County Courthouse. The Fournay Building provided commercial space for early businesses. A fancy brick opera house was built in the middle part of town, which provided an entertainment space for the citizens. One of the early tenants of the McKinnon block was the Scandia American Bank. Another large employer was the Erskine Brick Company, led by Sheldon W. Vance. Crookston Brick were a cream color. Finally, 13 hotels supplied the traveling public with a resting place. The stories about how the Crookston area farms were gold mines circled the globe. Francis Reckitt from London, England heard these stories. In the early 1890s, Mr. Reckitt became the largest single real estate owner in Crookston. And in 1891, he began construction on a new building, which was initially thought to be a syndicate building. This building would be constructed of brick and stone, was four stories in height, and included a basement level. It would be called the Reckitt Block, and it was located at the southeast corner of 2nd and Main. Business space was located on the first floor, with offices on the second floor. Over the years, many types of businesses located in the Reckitt Block. These included a barber shop, a candy store, real estate companies, an eye doctor, a jewelry store, lawyers, a meat market, tailor shops, a cigar store, a drug store, a printing business, saloons, insurance companies, law enforcement offices, and express companies. The U.S. Land Office was even located in the Reckitt Block. Initially, the hotel portion of the Reckitt Block was located on the third and fourth floors. Mary Louise Rose rented this portion of the building, outfitted the rooms in a classy style, and opened a restaurant to serve her customers. She coined the name Palace Hotel, which became more commonly used than the name Reckitt Block. However, Mary sold her interest in the hotel and restaurant after about a year. She would continue in the restaurant business in Crookston before passing away in 1910. The top two floors would also feature many different occupants and events over the years. These included band concerts, banquets, church socials, weddings, violin classes, and a dormitory for the Crookston Business College.
Sadly, by the year 2010, the wreck at Block, or Palace Hotel, had fallen into disrepair, and the city decided to tear it down due to safety concerns. The front of the building still looked solid, but the roof had caved in in spots. There was an effort to try to save the building, but it proved too costly. In October 2010, the building was demolished. That concludes the video. Make sure to check out my other YouTube videos and my primary website at mnbricks.com.